Hey everyone, it's me, Robert Wilson IV, and today we're going to be talking about how to start your first comic. Uh, or rather, how I started my first solo comic. It's not necessarily a prescription for everyone, I just want to show some useful ways that might help you go from concept to actually making a thing that other people can read. So I've been meaning to write and create my own comics from whole cloth for just like kind of as long as I can remember, right? So the very first comic pages I actually ever drew were for a story that I was writing and creating myself. It was, I still think is actually a really cool concept, a science fiction thing about astronauts kind of getting taken out of time. I got probably 20 pages into actually drawing the thing and I just fizzled out. It was so exciting to start the thing and the ideas were so potent in my mind. Rick Rubin talks about how an idea is this perfect thing, it's so exciting and it really does feel perfect and then you start to write it, you start to make it and the, the further into writing a thing you get, the less perfect it can be. And that's a huge roadblock for so many people, uh, myself included, right? There are about a million steps in between having a great idea that excites you, that um, lights your imagination on fire and makes you want to create, and actually having a finished product. That, I think, might actually be the hardest part about maybe making anything. I mean, actually, it's one of the hardest parts about making this YouTube channel. The difference between having the idea for the channel and sitting down, writing an outline, and talking to you, talking to this camera, and I still haven't even, even edited the thing, right? The resistance is, is tremendous because this idea in my head is so beautiful and this thing that I'm making now is just not as good as that idea, right? It's not as good as what I envisioned and nothing I have ever made has been as good as I envisioned. However, a huge difference between those things that are perfect in my mind and the things that I have made are the things I've made are actually real, right? And having ideas doesn't really count for much. Uh, we all have ideas, everyone has ideas every day, but it's the people who can make themselves sit down at, you know, the notebook, the computer, the drawing board, and actually make a thing that, that have anything real. So I think the first big mistake that I had made in probably the four or five stories that I had started writing uh, and, and several of them I've even drawn like dozens of pages of uh, dozens of just completely unseen pages months of work uh, is that all of these stories were epic in my mind they were big stories a lot of times with lots of characters and that's a huge commitment right it's like asking a baby to run a marathon uh, you gotta learn to walk first it is so important to build those muscles up, right? First you gotta learn how to walk, break down a plot outline, write a script, draw a page, you know? Forget a graphic novel, draw a page, and then build up those muscles, build up those disciplines, right? And this is not to say that I will never do an epic story. I honestly really, really want to. I have two in mind that I'm planning, keep your eyes out. I'll just say, keep your eyes out for God hand. Uh, it's coming at some point. You don't get discipline out of thin air, right? And most people, you don't, you don't get time without money, you know? Your time costs money. You gotta live, you, you have to eat. So most of us need to make money if we're gonna invest into creating something huge, right? So with all that in mind, I would encourage you, with your first comic, let's start small. If you've never drawn a comic page before, I would, I would encourage you to just start with two to maybe four pages. Just come up with an, a little concept or a small interaction. 
uh, you, you've got to start with a challenge that you can achieve. We have to be realistic with ourselves. It's not saying don't dream. I want you to dream. I want you to dream as huge as you can. But those dreams, those ideas, they, they don't matter to anyone else in the world until they're a thing. You gotta make the thing. And how do you build up that discipline of making things? It's, you just gotta make things, which, uh, you know, that can be challenging. But that's why we're starting small. This With this project, Dream House, it's going to be my first complete comic that I am writing and drawing and probably coloring all myself, right? I've drawn a bunch of comics. I've drawn hundreds of pages of comics. And I've written a bunch, but n nothing that was ever completed, you know? And that's something that I'm embarrassed by. I, I, I don't want to have a graveyard of unfinished things. And so I, I want to have a body of work that's complete, that can mean something to anyone other than myself. And which is not to say there's not value inherently in just making things, but I'm making to communicate with people, you know? And that's what I'm doing right here, right now. I am trying to communicate with you. I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Um, I want my work to be a social thing and uh, I want it to be able to help people in some way, in the way that so many of the stories that I love have helped me, right? That's what I want. So I've got to finish things, I've got to publish them. So with Dreamhouse, uh, the initial concept came to me while I was driving home from my little brother's wedding in Kansas. You know, my kids were in the back seat of the minivan, zoning out doing their thing we we're all deliriously tired my wife was listening to her audiobook i'm driving and i just start noticing all of these houses that are just abandoned they're empty some of them are collapsed some of them look like they're in pretty good shape right but there no one's there no cars there no roads leading to them like everything's overgrown it's clear no one's living there right these buildings are just abandoned. And that, that struck a weird like fear in my heart and in my mind. Uh, the idea that someone could put so much effort, so much money, so many resources into a house, you know, into this thing that for most of us is the most valuable thing that we could realistically own, right? And, and just leave it, just abandon it. And the conversation about why that might happen, I mean, that's, that's a whole other thing, right? But it sparked a story, just like the, the idea of a story in my head, about finding an abandoned house. And not just an abandoned house, but a, a beautiful mid-century modern, uh, almost mansion, you know? Just this kind of the most ideal house that I could imagine for myself, my dream house, and how weird and off-putting it would be to just find it in the woods. No roads, no electricity going in, just a house, it's just out there. And that idea just got, it set my mind on fire, right? That idea set my mind on fire. And over the few hours driving back to Oklahoma City, I had a little, I don't want to say a complete story, but I, I had I had the bones of an interesting story that just kind of like came to me, came to my imagination. So initially I thought this could be it. This could be this short thing that I wanted to make. Uh, and I thought, I feel like I could tell this story in about 40 pages. And for me, someone who has drawn as many as 140, 150 pages in a year. You know, 40 pages is like not really a huge deal, you know? It's a lot of work, but it's work I've done before. I could do that. I could I could accomplish this thing. Uh, and so for me, as a professional artist, professional comic artist, 40 pages seemed very accomplishable. Uh, again, if you're not an experienced comic creator, I would highly encourage you Start smaller, right? If you if you have a few hundred pages under your belt, 40, 50, 60 pages, whatever, 
you can do it. But just try to be realistic with yourself about the limits of your discipline, right? I'm not talking about the limits of your abilities because we could all accomplish anything if time and money weren't an issue, but the limits of your discipline, right? So I had this idea that I was super enthusiastic about, I was super excited about, but I didn't really know how to write the thing. Uh, and so actually at C2E2 in Chicago, which is one of my favorite conventions, I was at dinner with a few friends Hey everyone, it's Future Rob here. I am editing the video and inking some Dreamhouse pages, and I noticed that I pronounced Dave's last name wrong. It's Dave Scheid. I was at dinner with Dave Scheid and our mutual pal Steens. I accidentally deleted the whole clip, so now I'm here explaining that to you, and um, I hope you're doing well. Back to the video. And I started talking with Dave, about this story, and Dave's a big horror guy. Dave is a fantastic comic writer, writes mostly kids stuff like uh, Mayor Good Boy and my kids' favorites, Agents of Slam, Dave Rules. So I'm talking with Dave about this story, and Dave's like, man, sounds like you should just get an editor. And I was like, oh man, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe. And Dave looked over at me and looked over at Steens, and he's like, man, you should hire Steens. And so I ended up setting up a call with Steens to talk about kind of what that looked like, right? Because I had never worked with an editor as a writer, worked with a bunch of editors as an artist. The first thing Steens had me do, which by the way, Steens is a fantastic cartoonist in their own right and uh, has been an editor for a few different companies, does freelance editorial, so they really kind of like know the entire process, right? From writing and ideation all the way through the publishing and distribution side, they're kind of a unique case in that they do and kind of have done it all in terms of, you know, American comics. So Steens wanted me to write an outline and I thought, sounds boring, uh, <laughs> uh, but okay. And uh, I thought, yeah, this is surely, this is not gonna be that hard, right? To write an outline, you just describe what happens in your story. But as soon as I started writing that outline, it was exactly like good old Rick Rubin said, like I start, I start clacking on those keys and I was like, oh man, this sucks. Like this isn't good, <laughs> this isn't good at all. Uh, and it was super disappointing. And it took me a long time to push through that first draft and that first draft did suck, uh, and it was very incomplete, and I did not know what I was doing. And I basically left the whole last, you know, second half of the story out completely, uh, other than like one paragraph, and it's like, and this is how it ends. Guess what? That's not very useful when you're trying to break down a story, you know? So we went through three rounds of revisions on that outline, and it was painful. It was not pleasant. And there were a few times when Steens kind of like kicked my butt about it. And as soon as that outline was done and it was time to script this thing, it was, it just came out. It was so easy. I was able to look through that outline because I have thought it through so thoroughly because they had poked holes in every little weak point of the story. I was able to script and thumbnail this thing in like two weeks. There are very little revisions in that script and thumbnail uh, portion of the process. The actual scripting was a piece of cake. It was almost subconscious with one little exception where I did kind of get this writer's block halfway through. <laughs> and it's funny because halfway through ended up being about 40 pages. Remember, I thought, I thought this thing was gonna be 40 pages total and I ended up going to 81. I've since cut it down to like maybe 78 to 79. But uh, halfway through scripting and thumbnailing, because I like to do them both at the same time, and I highly encourage you trying that. Even if you're just a writer and you don't wanna draw and you just wanna write scripts for an artist to draw, give it a shot. I think it will really inform the way that you construct a page and tell your story panel to panel. So, I just could not move past this midpoint of the story where things like really get cracking. And I ended up, I was working on an iPad, working in Clip Studio Paint, which is my favorite digital art program, and I just could not move. And I sat at my computer 
looking at Clip Studio. I sat with my iPad looking at Clip Studio for like at least a day, really trying to force my way through it, and I just maybe got another one or two pages out in a day, which, you know, if you're if you're going at five to eight pages a day, one feels like nothing. It feels like defeat, you know? And it's not, because sometimes it just gets slow, sometimes it's harder. But I ended up thinking, you know what? I am going to, I'm gonna go to a coffee shop, I'm gonna try doing this on paper, and it just, it just worked. I ended up scripting and thumbnailing the second half of the story about another 40 pages in four days. It, I did, it was at least 10 pages a day, which is wild, because when I am working off someone else's script, and that, and it's already written for me, I can't thumbnail off of a script at a clip of 10 pages a day. Like, it's, that's ridiculous. It's actually much easier for me to script and thumbnail at the same time and it turns out just a lot faster uh, but I think that's th bingo I feel like that's really kind of an interpretation issue more than an actual labor thing maybe maybe that's a different video I don't know let me know in the comments the second huge benefit that working with Steens and, and probably working with like any good editor is that for me at least like I am highly deadline motivated uh, and maybe this is just a freelancer thing maybe it's an ADHD thing because you know but like if I can help it I will not I will not blow a deadline and Steen's set up these regular deadlines for me to get stuff turned in and I did I think with one exception I I hit everything on time I think one of the outlines one of the outline revisions was a week late. But even in that scenario, even if you're working for a publisher, like just let them know. Just as far in advance as possible say, hey, having problems with this, here's where I'm at, I feel like I'm gonna be however many days late, and I would probably pad that by a bit. Try to be on time though. So working with an editor, even if it's not a professional editor, right? You don't you don't have to pay someone. It can be could be a friend, could be a writing partner, could be could just be like a, a spouse or a partner, or boyfriend or girlfriend or your mom. Mom might be a good editor. And those regular deadlines are going to help you maintain momentum in any creative project, especially comics. Momentum is so huge. Discipline to keep that momentum is so huge. I cannot overstate the importance of momentum. So many times I have held momentum and then something happened and I had a week, two, three, four weeks off and then it's like I just never pick it back up again, right? It's just kind of gone. So having those deadlines, having that editor to be responsible to is going to go so far in actually getting the thing done. After I switched to paper when I was scripting and thumbnailing. I mean, it's kind of a pain, right? Because that means that I had to scan in everything I wrote down. A lot of times I had to kind of transcribe it because the handwriting sometimes is all over the place. It kind of reminds me of Brian Eno's Oblique Strategies, where sometimes your brain, you get so locked into a pattern, you end up you end up at a standstill, right? And the oblique strategies, switching from digital to physical or vice versa, uh, these type of things, just reframing what you're doing in a different light, changing something to reframe the process in your mind can really help you get unstuck. I don't recommend it as a like regular working practice. If you're in flow, if you've found a good discipline for yourself, I keep saying discipline, I keep saying discipline. Keep, keep in the flow, right? Keep the discipline. But for when you're stuck, you know, let's change your perspective a little bit. Try a different medium. Try a different time. Try a different place, you know? Anything to make you think or feel a little differently, right? Uh, it, it'll, it'll probably be a real help getting unstuck. To kind of bring this all together, what's the takeaway for part one, for writing your first story? I think the big takeaway is get someone else involved, even if they're not on the creative side, right? Even if it's not a co-writer or an artist or something like that, get someone involved who can give you honest feedback, who you trust, 
He's not afraid to hurt your feelings, obviously not intentionally, you know? You want, you want this to be a kind and trusting process, but sometimes you suck, man. Sometimes I suck, and we need people to tell us that, right? We need that, I need that, right? Because you get so close to the thing, I can't always tell when I suck. Especially with a new craft, with, with writing, it's so much trickier. It takes a different perspective, right? And so having an editorial voice of either a professional editor, which is great, hire a, hire a good editor if you can. And if not, because I, I know most people starting off probably can't devote a ton of financial resources to this. Who's a friend you trust their instincts, you know? Who's a friend who when you talk about TV shows, movies, video games, comics, whatever, has insightful opinions. And if you do hire an editor, I would really recommend setting aside an actual budget for that, right? I would anticipate an editor who has any kind of experience to charge probably not less than $40 an hour. Um, so you're gonna need to set aside some significant money, right? I would say for this thing that I'm doing, um, I, I think Steens has billed me something like 10 hours. So even if her rate was as low as $40 an hour, which it's not, that would still be 400 bucks, right? It's, it's not insubstantial expense, but it is so valuable. Because without Steens, I don't think I would have made this thing, right? But I wrote my first complete script and I thumbnailed it and now I'm already into penciling it. Uh, which we'll talk about soon. So get that editor, get that outside opinion, get someone you trust who can help you get to that first big milestone of writing a complete outline and then a complete script. Those are the first two big milestones. Write the complete outline, probably have to write it again, probably a couple times, and then write that complete script. I left off the script like just with the word you, no punctuation, just you. Good job, I should have wrote an outline for the script, right? I really hope this was helpful for you. Please leave any questions you've got down in the comments. I would love for this to be, you know, a bit of a conversation. I want to be a resource for y'all, both in sharing my expertise, which I, you know, I've got more expertise on the drawing side, the art side, and uh, merchandising and stuff like that but also in the stuff that I'm learning like writing and I guess even I don't know I, I don't know this is my second YouTube video probably shouldn't be don't ask me a YouTube advice I mean I guess you can if you want goodbye see I, I talked about how I should have shaved the last time and then I didn't do it again I didn't shave Hey guys, thanks so much for watching to the end of the video, and I would really appreciate it if y'all would like and subscribe. Uh, if you know someone who is interested in making comics, interested in making art, if you would share this video with them, it would make a huge difference helping me make this a sustainable thing where I can continue to make videos and make this kind of part of my, my overall artistic career. Uh, I appreciate y'all so much. I will talk to you real soon. Goodbye. All right. All right. My manga shelf. Focus on the manga. It's the manga. That's the manga, Dad. Ugh, no. Why, Dad? That's my manga. You like a manga shelf. Oh, yeah. Focus on the manga. That's my manga. Goodbye.